Good morning and welcome back to Ride and Steel. Steve Morois here. Today I'm in Augusta, Maine at the Togus Veterans Center where a number of people are gathering on behalf of Travis Mills. Travis Mills is the veteran who served in Afghanistan and lost both his arms and legs when he stepped on an IED. So people are gathering about here to um, raise money and bring support for this young man. So stay tuned, folks. When we come back, we're going to introduce you to Tim Harriman, who's organizing this particular event, and many of the family members of Travis Mills himself. I'm Donnie Jewett. I'm from Gardner, Maine. You're watching the Miles for Mills Ride with Riding Steel. Steve Morris here of Ride and Steel, and I'm back at Big Moose Harley Davidson in Portland, Maine. And standing with me is Betty Reynolds. Betty Reynolds has been on an anti-bullying mission for the past couple of years, and soon she has an event coming up called Be Inspired. Why don't you tell the folks watching what this is all about, Betty? Okay. Well, it's going to be May 9th at the Portland Elks Lodge in Portland, Maine, from 5 to 9. We've got an incredible lineup of musicians coming, including Jillian Jensen from the X Factor, Jim Mayer from the Jimmy Buffett Band, uh, along with Shannon Seelig from Maine here, and as well as the Veo Twins, the Reynolds Twins. We've got co-CEO of Archie Comic Books coming to help us out with uh, the new anti-bullying comic book that just came out through there, and just a, a, a really good lineup of people coming. So we're, this is a donation only event. Uh, we're asking schools to participate by um, being a part of the contest, Arts and Literacy Contest, and for more information on that, you can come to uh, call me at 415-3520, and that would be Betty Reynolds. And of course, you can always find uh, this information on rideandsteel.com as well. Go to our calendar and check out the uh, uh, calendar uh, pages there. And uh, as spring rolls around, you know, the schools are asking for Bikers Against Bullying to, to uh, ride into their schools and help their kids out. We have a lot of free things that we're giving out at this event, and we're hoping you know, that the first 200 people will be getting you know, as many free things as possible. We are raising money for three organizations that are going into the schools and making a difference. So please join us. Excellent. Thank you, Betty. All right. All right. Well, welcome back to Ride and Steel. As I said, I was going to introduce you to Tim Harriman, and he's the one who's organizing this event. And he has a young lady with him by the name of? Mandy. Mandy. And now a lot of work goes into putting something like this together. Would you mind explaining to the people, first of all, Tim, what your relation is to Travis Mills? Absolutely. Travis is my nephew by marriage. He's married to Kelsey. Uh, Kelsey's my niece. Kelsey was born and brought up here in Gardner area and then moved down to Texas. Um, Travis... Uh, it's it's incredible what he's been going through and and the spirit that he still has right now for to just get better. He's it's it's amazing. As I stated at the start of the show, Travis Mills had lost his arms and legs uh, due to an, um, an an explosive device that he stepped on in Afghanistan. Correct, and uh, apparently a number of his unit got wounded as well, right, with shrapnel. So so our you know our prayers go out to all of those guys out there. But this young lady here was offering a lot of insight as to what Travis is experiencing uh, in the hospital down there, or at home. He's at home now, right? Yeah, they have their own apartment on the hospital base. Right. Um, so they're still at the hospital base where he can go to physical therapy and occupational therapy all day. Um, but they have their own little place and their daughter has her own room and, you know, they're able to live a somewhat normal life now. Right. Yeah. From what I understand, uh, Travis is, uh, is upbeat, positive about uh, recovery and uh, He's quite a jokester, too, apparently, and uh, takes advantage of every opportunity he has to be on camera to help bring awareness to, you know, not only his condition, but others as well, correct? Absolutely, yeah. He he was always a jokester before this happened, uh, so now he he continues that attitude you know he he's trying to make the best of a bad situation so he doesn't want uh he doesn't feel sorry for himself you know he signed up for this so um you know he definitely likes 
entertaining people. So he has a joke he plays on people where he tells him his hand's voice activated. It's not. <laughs> uh, so he gets to people to yell at his hand, you know, to open it and close it and stuff. And then he says, oh, I'm just messing with you. I'm just messing with you. So, yeah, he's still... Uh, he doesn't want people to feel sorry for him, you know, yeah. so he uh, jokes around with them a lot. Um, I see that you're combining motorcycles with uh, antique cars, hot rods, yeah. all of this stuff, which is really nice because I've had a lot of people approach me in the past couple of years wanting to do exactly this. Mm -hmm. So, you know, here's our first shot at uh, combining cars and motorcycles and building that support. Yeah. Um, what's your goal or aim uh, today to accomplish? Just really to raise awareness. Uh, you know, obviously to raise funds as well for Travis and the family, but uh, to raise awareness for all of our men and women over there. Right. It's, uh, it's ongoing. The fight's still happening. <laughs> I, I, you get me going too, buddy. Trust me. Uh, we, we, we ride for our wounded heroes a lot, and uh, I know their stories personally, and it, and, it, it, and it kills you. It really does inside, you know, to think that we're sending our kids over there, and yep. they're getting maimed, and we kind of wonder why sometimes, you know? And uh, so this is going to be a family affair, pretty much. I've already been introduced oh, yeah. to a half a dozen family members yeah. here. Oh, it's amazing how many family support we have, um, you know, both close family and extended family uh, from both sides. Uh, they're all here today. So, so it's, so it's kind of nice, you know, you're doing a fundraiser, you're bringing awareness uh, to the troops that are suffering out right. there, and you get to reunite with your family yeah. instead of once every 10 years, you, right. you know, <laughs> you're kind of like right. jumping it a little bit, little bit here. Yeah. So it, it's going to be a special day for all of you, I yeah, believe, don't you? Awesome day. Yeah, absolutely awesome day. Uh, I, I'm a car guy. I always have been. Uh, that's what got me you know excited about doing something like this do you have a car here uh, actually those two right up there are mine she's going to be driving the corvette and the el camino is what's going to be leading and and so on so yeah All right. and we're on our way to the owl's head transportation museum and they apparently already have a, a pretty good weekend in store it's amazing owl's head has been uh tremendous with, with the help that they've provided they invited us to be a part of this and uh, the air show is, is, is sure to be spectacular. They've given us an entire field to park all, all of our cruisers in. Uh, we're going to have actually uh, uh, pieces of plywood for the bikes to put their kickstands down on. Uh, it's not their first rodeo. They know how to do this, and they're doing it right. So, uh, yeah, I look forward to getting down there. It should be a good time. So what do we have in store for us here as the cars and the motorcycles begin to roll in and everything? Is there any ceremony that's going to occur, or do we just get together and we head out? We'll, we'll have a little meeting uh, before, just before we get going. Um, I just would like to tell everybody about, uh, uh, you know, we're going to take a, a leisurely cruise down, try to be safe, have a good time. Everybody, let's just get there safe uh, and enjoy the air show. We're, we're, we're uh, honored to have all of the, the a Monmouth PD, uh, Monmouth Rescue. We're going to have all of the, uh, the counties involved. Uh, they're going to be going with us. Uh, Augusta PD is going to come out here in Block 17 to get us all out onto the road. It's going to be awesome. Right. We're also hoping to get some of the veterans here out here to check out the cars and the bikes as yeah. well so they can enjoy some yeah, of this. They love doing that. You know, I used to come to this thing that the Rusty Nuts Car Club would That's do right. down here yeah. and uh, they called it their own Memorial Day, I guess, or, uh, right? You remember that? Yeah. And, uh, and boy, there would be like all these guys coming out here and there's like hundreds of cars and motorcycles and what a treat it was, right? All right, you have an opportunity to put a message out there to someone sitting in their living room about what we're doing here today. You know, what would be your message to them? Um, I guess really just to say, you know, please keep our troops in mind. Uh, you know, like my dad said, it is still going on. Uh, there is still a war. And even even without that, they still keep us safe every day, you know. Um, and, and they're putting their lives, life and limb on the line, you know, to protect our safety, our, the freedoms that we have, you know, the freedom to come out here and, and do this. So, um, you know, it's, it's appropriate that we're doing it at the Veterans Hospital so that, you know, we can pay homage to that. One percent of our people, you know, step up to volunteer in our military and mm -hmm. stuff. And there's a perception out there that when they volunteer to join the service that they're all taken care of, right. you know. And uh, what, what's your answer to that, to that kind of uh, person that's sitting out there going, geez, why should I support something like this? I mean, they get plenty of benefits and everything. So why are they so worried about money? Well, actually, the government is doing quite a bit for Travis. He couldn't be in better hands. They've done a tremendous job down to Walter Reed, and they'll continue to do so. But there's things that are gonna that Travis and Kelsey are gonna uh, 
run into later on in life that, that the government simply can't do. So if people wanted to learn more about uh, Travis Mills mm -hmm. or our veterans, are there any places or any sites that you would refer them to? Uh, yes, absolutely. There is a website set up. It's uh, travismills.org or the Facebook page is support for Travis Mills and family. Um, so you can go to either one. Uh, on the website, we also have several pages on there where you can give back to other organizations as well, some information for them, uh, organizations that have already helped Travis and Kelsey. Um, and we've got all kinds of information on that. You can email or, or call. So, Stay tuned, folks. We've got more to come. When I was young, I worked my granddaddy's farm. I worked hard for the promise of the land and the life. Now I've been locked out, the American dream. Well, we sold off the tractor, we sold off the land. I moved to the city and I got myself a wife. Now I've been locked out, the American dream. Harriman. Yeah. Oh, that's right. You're, uh, Tim Harriman. Um, yeah, his niece. Oh, his niece. Yeah. Right. So you helped put this together, right? First of all, I want to inform you that this this lovely lady here to my right is uh, Megan. She is the one who initially contacted me about Travis Mills way back. Uh, how far? April 10th was when it happened. I think it was that day, wasn't it? Was that day that I contacted you. Yeah. yeah. That's right. And we immediately posted it on Facebook, and hundreds of people responded with prayers and supported Travis. It was an awesome, awesome, uh, you know, posting. Don't you think? It really was. And Facebook and Writing Steel and Facebook alone has been a huge, huge help. Um, his support page for his family is over 20,000 people so far. Wow, wow. And he's in Texas right now, right? No, nope, he's in Maryland, in Bethesda. Oh. Yeah, okay. he's recovering at a hospital there, working on his rehabilitation. He's finally on his 511 leg. He's learning how to use those and can feed his daughter now, so he's doing very well. Nice, nice. So, how many family members are here today in support of this? <laughs> Our family's huge. I couldn't give you a number. Um, there's probably 50 of just us in Maine and then family and family and family's friends, so we've got quite a few people here. Right. Yeah. So, Megan, what was it like, you know, helping out with this? It was a lot, a lot of fun, and it was great to see all the support that people were willing, with no problem whatsoever, to, to donate and do whatever they could to help and give something for raffles or donate money. So how often are you in contact with Travis Girls? <sighs> Through Facebook, probably, I mean... Yeah, with keeping up with his posts and stuff, but he's really, really busy because he's really, really focused on, it's September, I believe, that he's coming, uh, his troops are coming home, so he wants to be there to greet them and be on his tall legs to be there to... That's right, he, was there, he wasn't there alone, there were some other people there with him when that bomb went off, right? Exactly. And so, how would you say his, his uh, frame of mind is, his condition is at this time? <laughs> Travis is awesome, um, if you met him once, you'd remember him forever, so... He's really good at keeping high spirits, and I mean, he has good days in his bed, but the kid is just unbelievable, and I mean, if you have a bad day, go on a site, and he'll make you feel better. He's just unreal. He's yeah, great at I have to, you know, agree with that comment, all right? I mean, we, a lot of us, you know, have a tendency to get all wrapped up in life, and 
and uh, you know have concerns that are, are irrelevant when you compare what his family is going through. Uh, you know, here's a young man that came back with, and his arms and legs are gone, and he's got an upbeat attitude about it. I'm sure he has his bad days, but for the most part, he's using his injury to help others. He really, really is. Um, we were just talking about there was a soldier that I was at with the read that didn't want to get up and do anything, and Travis went and talked to him and got him to come to PT and OT, and he's really, really an inspiration for so many people. So in closing this conversation that we're having with each other here, uh, say Travis is sitting out there watching this right now. You know, you got some words for him? Um, just keep on using that moneymaker and doing what you're doing, Travis. Moneymaker. <laughs> what uh, Ashley, what do you got for it? Um, I just am so proud of you, and you're my hero, and I'm glad that he's made a face and a name for all the other wounded warriors like him, and we can keep carrying on his legacy. Oh, did he really? Nice. Oh, Very nice. And I want to encourage you folks who are watching this show, you know, to support our troops. It's imperative that once they get back home that, you know, even they may, they, some of them may not have physical injuries. But they may be suffering from PTSD, and it's serious business when they're going through that. And they need our support. You know, do what you can to support a troop. Go up to him and, and shake his or her hand and let him know that you love him. Thank you very much. How you doing? Another day in paradise. Another day in paradise. <laughs> you guys, you're looking pretty good over there. You got a lot of people supporting you up here in Maine. Uh, I really appreciate it too. It's uh, it's uh, just wonderful people do you know generosity and everything. I can't believe it. And I'm hoping you're sh shopping around for me because I want to, you know, get a, get a nice car. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you got a pretty good sense of humor and that you're, you're, you're doing a great job in uh, advocating for, you know, your fellow soldiers that are wounded out there. And I want to thank you for doing that. You're taking a bad thing and making it a good thing, brother. Oh, I appreciate it. Well, I want to help any way I can as long as uh, I'm moving towards getting better and everything. I can't complain about the day going on. And uh, I have plans for the future, so I'm going to keep going and helping out with what I can do. Hey. My wife, my wife wants to talk or something. All right. You don't want, she doesn't. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> so, how, so how is your wife doing anyways, taking care of the baby and all? Oh, she's doing good. Uh, me and the baby are kind of the same, except I can communicate better when, <laughs> when I need help. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, hey, you got a lot of people that love you. We want to wish you the best, okay? All right. Well, thank you so much, and I hope you guys have a good day. And, you know, just make sure everybody keeps a smile on their face. This is, you know, the sun is going to come out if you smile. It's just, it's just what I was told. Sorry to spring an interview on you. <laughs> So you're, his, you're Travis's aunt? Yes. Yeah, and, you know, why don't you share, you know, with the people watching what it was like to learn of this tragedy that occurred to your nephew? It was very tragic to hear, but if everybody had his sense of accomplishment and, you know, encouragement, I mean, he's there and he's encouraging others, you know, amputees that are just laying in bed, and, and he'll go over and encourage them to go do things, so... Right. But he's an inspiration to so many people just watching the videos of him and how far he's come. Well, he's pretty much well-known nationwide now, isn't yes. he just about? Overseas, know? too. Overseas as well. Yeah. You know, his fellow soldiers are probably keeping a close eye oh, on yeah. him, you think? Yeah, his big thing is he wants to get his tall legs in both hands so that when his troops come back, he's at that place to greet them and salute them. Oh, that'll be awesome, so, won't it? What, yep. what, a, what a nice motion to yeah. have. Uh, you know, acknowledgement that would be for them, yeah. you know. And I'm sure he'll be happy to see his, you know, brothers and sisters in arms coming home mm -hmm. safely, I hope, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, thank you so much for uh, talking with me for a minute. Yeah. And, uh, you know, good luck. you got a huge family and a huge responsibility yeah. ahead of you now, don't you? <laughs> yes. Yeah. It yeah. has changed the direction of your family, don't you think? Yeah. I mean, from what I understand, you guys are already pretty close. Mm -hmm. But it seems like now you're all unified in, in one purpose, and that is to help support... Right. Travis, his wife, yep. Ash, uh, uh, Kelsey. Kelsey, his wife Kelsey, and the baby's name is Ke Chloe. Chloe, that's right. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you. All right, goodbye. All right, bye. When we return from these messages, we'll take you to the Portland Expo, where we were invited by the Red Claws to hold a fundraising event there. So stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Well, good morning. My name is Wendy Gallant, and I'm with Sherry Burgoyne. Sherry Burgoyne, and we are this morning at the Portland Expo at the Maine Red Claws basketball game. We are in attendance for Bikers Against Bullying event. That's right. We are sharing the event with the Veo Twins. They were so graciously inviting us down, so we decided to join them. They are a cute 
girls, aren't they? I just love them. They're so sweet and generous. And their family is here to back them up as well, always. Steve and uh, Michelle, their parents. Mm -hmm. um, and we're all here to support the cause for Bikers Against Bullying. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. We have a nice interview coming up with Scott Vogel. Wonderful. We'll be right back. I'm here now with Scott Vogel. How are you, Scott? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Thanks. So glad to be here today. Tell me what you do here at the Expo. I am the uh, coordinator of game operations for the Maine Red Claws basketball team. Mm -hmm. Tell me how it is that the bikers against bullying and the Veo Twins all ended up here at the Expo. Yeah, so we had the uh, the Veo Twins. Obviously, we recognized them for, for their talent and wanted them to come in and, uh, and, and sing the national anthem for us. And then uh, once we got them in and, and signed up, we, we got to know a little bit more, more about them and what they do uh, and saw that they have a strong connection with, uh, with Bikers Against Bullying and Bullying in general. Um, so I'd reached out to Steve, uh, the twins' dad, and uh, talked to him about maybe getting a group out uh, from Bikers uh, to get the kids out and, and into the stands to watch uh, one of our games. Great, and they got discounted tickets. And what are the perks that they're going to get to have today? Uh, the perks that they're going to get is, uh, is they, they're going to have our primetime slot, uh, which is a seven-minute slot before the game. Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to be out there with our on-court MC, uh, Jason Gibbons. Uh, he, he does a lot of ball tricks, stuff like that, kind of like the Harlem Globetrotters type oh, stuff. Uh, so that it'll be fun for the kids. Uh, and then we'll also have the coach and some of the players up into the stands to talk to them here before the game as well. Matt, what is your take on the whole bullying thing? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it, it's, it's something that's, that's really important. I'm, I'm happy to see that it's definitely becoming, uh, it's, it's taken a lot more light, uh, gotten a spotlight, uh, and it's something that everybody deals with, I think, at some point. Um, so it's really important and it's good uh, for, for causes like Bikers Against Bullying to really uh, bring, it, bring the attention to it. You can't turn a blind eye to it because it's out there. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, they, they, the kids that are bullied definitely need the support of organizations like this. It's, it's not easy to stand up uh, when you're bullied, so mm -hmm. it's, definitely, uh, it's definitely great to have these organizations, and, and we're happy to be able to do something with them. This is Sherry, and I'm standing here with Brent Creasy. How are you this morning? I am doing awesome today here at the Red Claws game. Well, we are here today to support Bikers Against Bullying. We're going into our second season of taking our program to school. So tell me, Brent, what are you thinking right now? I'm thinking it's going to be a busy year, Sherry. After last year and the amount of calls and emails we got in the end of the year for schools, wow. So I'm hoping we can also raise a little money for the cause. And, uh, and I know you've been fielding uh, scheduling already for 2013. So I think it's going to be a real busy year. Well, it is, and I'll tell you, we already have a waiting list for the schools this year, and the money that we raise is going to help bring our program into the schools. Uh, our program is at no cost to the schools, and uh, Brent donates his time, and the bikers donate their time, and the money goes towards what? Can you remember? I, I remember giving out a lot of t-shirts, Sherry. I mean, like hundreds and hundreds of Bikers Against Bullying and Ride and Steel t-shirts, and seeing those kids' faces light up, mm -hmm hand tagging them as we came in on the bikes. It's just an awesome day, an awesome time. Well, the very first thing to do when you're trying to get the children's attention for um, anything, really, is, is what? Well, I, they got to have fun. They're kids, and, you know, they want to have fun. They want to be around things that they feel are cool. Mm -hmm. That's been my end. As a professional martial artist, they think that's cool. So they'll listen to me better than they'll listen to maybe their parents or their teachers sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so the other thing is motorcycles. Bikers are cool, and uh, I say that having been one for a while now. Um, so the, the two combo has been a great way to get the kids' attention and then to give them a really valuable and, and helpful message. And now I'm here with Kristen and Catherine Vail. We are at the Maine Red Claws game, and they have a table out front. Mm -hmm. Tell us why you are here today and why we're here with you. Um, we're here to help um, the Bikers Against Bullying thing and to sell CDs and half of the, the, the profit goes to um, Bikers Against Bullying yeah, to help with their cause. All of the net proceeds actually go to yeah. um, the cause. So you have a CD of your own because you sing? Yes. Yes, yes. we sing. <laughs> we're so excited because we're going to be doing the anthem today and yeah, and we just came out with a new CD and yeah, it's awesome. And what's happening after the game with you? Um, we're going to be going to Uno's and playing there, and yeah, yeah it's going to be great. We're going to be giving a concert down there. So cool is that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's definitely awesome. <laughs> you girls are involved in the Bikers Against Bullying. You're actually one of the founding people, part of that. Mm -hmm. um, and so, obviously, that you do that from experience. You felt you were being bullied. Oh yeah. And and so yeah. on. 
um, way back when, but here you are surviving and you're actually yeah. on top of the world for it. How did that happen? Um, well, um, the thing with that is at our old school, we were really bullied to a good extent because of um, we both have speech impairments. We both stutter and stuff. And, and I was actually re removed from classrooms to go to special speech therapy classes and people would they, they would call me names and all of that and that led to some other stuff that was very unhealthy but so. but what we're doing is we're taking what happened to us and expressing it through music and that's our positive way of dealing with it yeah yeah these girls are the most beautiful example of surviving such victimization thank you, thank thank you, very you much. so much you're welcome oh, Ryden Steele's Bikers Against Bullying has been invited to visit many schools this coming spring and summer, and the requests continue to come in. Please consider joining us at 1710 Bowling in Augusta, Maine for our Strikeout Bullying Fundraiser on March 17th. And for Betty Reynolds, be inspired and take a stand on May 9th to be held at the Portland Elks Lodge on 1945 Congress Street, Portland, Maine. And join the growing number of people reaching out to help schools help kids. I hope you enjoyed today's show and you'll tune in next week. Thank you for watching Ride and Steal.